The first unit of second piece English textbook is a poem Romeo and Juliet. This is in fact a poem which is from the extracts of the play written by William Shakespeare. Now the moment we hear Romeo and Juliet, you know the thoughts that come to our mind is they are the incarnation of true love or they are the role models of true love or divine love or real love. Now when a world across we see that when people talk about lovers and all of people who have committed each other as lovers they give examples of probably Romeo Juliet, Laila Majnu, Salim Anarkali and you know in Indian uh, case even uh, Devdas and Paru there are so many examples of this sort and Romeo and Juliet stand aloof and they stand different because they were the lovers uh, according to the play uh, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare who have stood all the uh, you know, uh, difficulties and then finally they uh, you know even they were ready to die for each other. So this is the play from which we have two extracts. One is that of the description of Juliet by Romeo and another one is the description of Romeo by Juliet and both the descriptions put together it has become a uh, poem and that poem is what we have uh, the Ju uh, Romeo and Juliet written by William Shakespeare. Now what is this extract? Let's see uh, the background of this particular poem. This is an extract uh, of uh, this particular play in which we see uh, William Shakespeare brings out or he describes the intense love of Romeo and Juliet which they express through their uh, speeches. Now see how much they loved each other. It was almost like a love at first sight. They meet at the party and immediately there is a birth of a strong love, true love in, within themselves. And by using various figures of speech, they express their love towards each other. And William Shakespeare brings out in such a beautiful manner the uh, feelings of these passionate lovers. Now we know... Uh, uh, as the people fall in love uh, and uh, you know they start loving each other everything looks colorful they start describing each other they love each other you know but then mostly when a young man and a young woman they meet more than the real love they will have something called infatuation the attraction that comes just at the spur of the moment and sometimes it disappears also probably after a moment or sometimes after some, uh, some days or after some years. But true love is something that it's like that of the love of Soros Cranes which is made or which is built for a love, uh, you know, lifetime. Now here we have two different families, two different rich families of Verona, the Capulets and the Montagues who were staunch enemies. Now the Romeo and Juliet belong to the rival families you know uh, and uh, Romeo belongs to the family of the Montagues whereas Juliet belongs to the family of the Capulets. Once old Lord Capulet that is Juliet's father he hosted a party and though Romeo belonged to the rival family or the family of the Montagues he attended the party in disguise to see uh, his dream lady actually not uh, Juliet another lady by name Rosalind who was his dream lady and he comes there attends a party and during the party he meets Juliet. Now let's uh, move on and see what uh, happens at the party. There at the party he sees Juliet who was uh, a young lady uh, probably 13 years old as per the uh, you know historical data or so probably as per the play that uh, Shakespeare says. He, she was only 13 years old but she had uh, the complete features of a woman who was a mature, beautiful and you know charming, attractive in every ways. And there he sees Juliet, you know Romeo sees this Juliet on the dance floor and is immediately attracted by her beauty because she was such a beautiful lady. After the dance he learns that or he comes to know that she was a daughter of uh, Lord Capulet. But see, when there is true love, they say true love casts out all fears. True love admits everything. True love will not avenge and true love will bear everything. So this is exactly what happens there. After the party, she, you know, Romeo comes to know that 
Juliet was from the rival fam uh, family, but that did not matter him, even, neither for her. On the other hand, Juliet too, by now, feels a prodigious birth of love for Romeo. What's the meaning of prodigious love? A strong love, an unprecedented love for Romeo, who belongs to her enemy family. That means he was from the Montagues. The extract given in the poem express their strong feelings for one another or for each other. Now, uh, listen, here we have this beautiful poem in which these two lovers meet at the uh, dance floor or dance party and they fall in love. And uh, as the story says in the, in the drama, the story says that uh, they m meet each other and they fall in love. They get married the same evening uh, in the presence of the priest and along with their servants. And after that, the party continues or probably uh, we don't have the records whether the, in the same evening or the next day. So during the party, Romeo kills one of the relatives of Juliet. And the nobility or the noble people around were about to catch him and uh, bring him uh, under, under the books of the law. So fearing punishment, he goes away from the provinces of the country or the kingdom. And Juliet is waiting for him every day. And this waiting goes on for years. And finally, both of their lives end in a tragedy. You know, uh, they wanted to meet each other, get married, but they don't get married. Both of them kill themselves and die. This is how the tragedy ends. But that is latter part of the play, by the way. What is given to us is a way in which Romeo describes Juliet and Juliet describing Romeo. Now let's go to the poem. So the first one is actually from the uh, scene, you know, Act One, and it's uh, from a particular scene. Uh, and we see here the description of Juliet by Romeo. Now, these are the words of Romeo. He looked at Juliet at the dance floor, is immediately attracted by her. So, it was almost like love at first sight. He thinks that she is made only for him. And he thinks that this love that, is, that he is feeling towards this uh, la uh, lady is something that is divine. But uh, he was so much surprised or stunned or, or rather, was so much attracted towards the beauty of uh, Juliet. And then he is describing. How does he describe? First, he refers to her brightness, which is probably or which was probably brighter than all the lights or torches around. So he says, oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. You know, probably as he entered the dance floor of that particular uh, party hall, he could see the torches all around. Those were the days that you wouldn't have LED lights, you wouldn't have uh, tube, tube lights, you wouldn't have other kinds of lights, electrical lights. Probably they would have fixed the torches on the walls, which would give out dim light all around. And comparing the brightness of Juliet, those lights would be you know, shining in a dim manner. So she, uh, she, uh, he says, oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright, which means... Juliet's brightness was better than the brightness of the torches. Or uh, Juliet would rather teach these torches how to burn bright. That means her brightness was superior to the brightness of the torches around. Look at the comparison here. Then he says, it seems, that means it appears, it looks. She hangs upon the cheek of the night. It looks like she hangs upon, that means she stays or dwells upon the cheek of the night. Cheek of the night means the best part of the night. Which is supposed to be the best part of the night? The twilight hour, the evening when it is sun, when the sun has set almost and uh, the night has crept in, but still people can see things around. There's an yellow, sh yellow shadow on everything and it's almost getting darker and that shift from the day into the night is a time that we call as twilight, is what is referred to as the cheek of the night. Romeo says, Juliet looks like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. You know, Shakespeare is very particular about, or let, let, let me tell, tell you, rather choosy about the words that he uses. He says, she looks like a costly jewel in an Ethiop's ear, Ethiop in an African, Af African's ear, which means she would shine brighter. Here, Juliet is referred to the bright uh, lady who is as bright as a rich jewel and Ethiop or night is referred to Ethiop or an African. 
Then he says, a beauty too rich for use and earth too dear. And how is her beauty? Her beauty is too rich for use. It's very expensive, costly. You know, too rich for use means you don't feel like consulting that beauty. You don't feel like approaching that beauty. That beauty creates a reverence, a respectful feeling. That's why he says, beauty too rich for use to earth or for the earth too dear. Too dear means too expensive. So shows how she, uh, uh, um, uh, she, how she appears. She appears like, so shows means so appears, a snowy dove. How does she appear? She appears like a snowy dove. Snowy means snow colored, white colored dove. Dove, of course, you know, it's in the fam family of the pigeon. And in olden days, they would use a pigeon as a messenger to take love letters. You know, a pigeon is also, uh, sorry, a, a pigeon or a dove is also used as a symbol of love. She looks like a symbol of love, which is as pure, as immaculate as that of a dove, uh, you know, uh, which, uh, as that of a dove, but which is in snow colored. So now uh, she say, uh, he says, so shows a snowy dove trooping with uh, crows. Trooping means flying, flying with crows. Now, you know, crows are black in color. When she stands in, with her friends, all her friends would probably look like crows, but she looks like a snowy dove. Let's move on. And he says, as yonder lady over her fellow shows, how does she look? She looks like a yonder lady. Actual meaning of yonder means there, beyond, at a distance. But here it means distinguished lady. Now, you know, because of a person's appearance, or because of a person's uh, uh, achievements, or the height of his personality, or probably because of his achievements, you know, sometimes we identify them differently. For example, if there's a crowd of people coming and among them, if Narendra Modi ji is walking, all our concentration will be only on Modi ji because we know almost the whole nation appreciate his, as, as him as a prime minister. Imagine there are a group of girls and among, among them there's Aishwarya Rai. Definitely, the eyes will concentrate only on her. So, similarly, now suppose, you know, there are a group of people walking around and if Juliet walks, how would she look? She looks different. Now, the dance is almost over. So, wh how, what is happening? All this while, as the dance was still on, Romeo was thinking about Juliet and was expressing to himself. It was kind of a self-talk. Which has, which has been given to us in the form of this poem, where he is telling that she looks very beautiful, uh, beautiful more beautiful than lights or torches. She looks more brighter than uh, a costly jewel in uh, Ethiop's ear and she looks like a snowy colored dove and she is very beautiful and all that he says. Now the dance is over. Then he says, the measure is done. The measure is done means the dance is over. I will watch her place of stand. And he says, now I will go see where she is going to halt. Place of stand here means where she is going to halt or rest. Where she is going to relax because all are dancing. Probably he finished the dance first. Now he sees where she is going to stand and he wants to go near her. And what does he want to do? And probably he wants to kneel down and he wants to offer his hands, touch her hands and then offer his love or probably propose her. That's why he says, and touching hers, her, her touching hers means by touching her hands, make blessed my rude hand. And he is thinking to himself, and now I must tell you something about Romeo. He was no ordinary person. He was a soldier, all the times busy at the war field. His hands have become rough because of the continuous Use, uh, you know, because he was continually hand, handling the weapons like swords and spears and shield and all that. Now his hands are rude because he's a warrior. Now he says, if at all I touch the divine hands of Romeo, uh, Juliet, my hands will become blessed. Here the meaning of blessed is become smooth. He says, by touching her hands, my hands will become smooth or blessed. Not that she was a god lady, 
that he could touch her hands and he would get the blessing. But she was really divine in many sense for him. Oh, it appeared like she was divine. And by touching her hands, he felt that he was going to be blessed. Then he says, he, you know, he questions to himself, did my heart love till now? Now you must remember this. He came to this party, not in search of Juliet. He had come there in search of his dream lady, Rosalind. Then why is he asking this question? Did my heart really love till today, till today or till this time? There's a reason. What's the reason? That he did not have the birth of true love. All those feelings which he had towards Rosaline or for other ladies were all such in, you know, feelings of infatuation. They were not of true love. So that's why he says, did my heart love till now? Forswear it sight. I can swear it by my eyes. For never I saw or I never saw true beauty till this night. My eyes were, have never found someone who was as beautiful as Juliet and hence I had never felt such a strong love towards anyone. So now when he asked, did my heart love till now? Here the word love literally means true love. He had felt infatuation for many girls or many ladies probably. He would have felt attraction towards some of them. But he never had the birth of true love. And that's why he says, I can swear by my eyes that I have never felt such love for anyone. Because I had not seen people who are so beautiful. So this extract is from act 1 and scene number 4. Now let's move on and see what Juliet has to say. You know, they meet, they talk, they propose, fall in love get married and depart as I told you already because of the mistake that Ju uh, Romeo had done that he had killed one of the relatives of Juliet and was anticipating punishment and hence he was almost he went into exile. Time went on, days passed by and Juliet is waiting for Romeo almost every day at the balcony of her house where he had come and met her the very first day, she hopefully looks at him uh, at the balcony and looks at the night and she yearns for him. And then he also, she also describes about Romeo. And that's what we have here. Now look at this. The first words that we see here the, uh, from the speech or from the description of Juliet are these. Come night, come Romeo, come thou, day in night. First, whom is he calling? Is she calling? She is she calling Romeo? No. She says, "Come night." Generally, girls and ladies are scared of night. You know why? Because night brings a lot of darkness and fear around. But in Juliet's case, she loves the night because she found her beloved during night. So she says, "Come night, come Romeo, come thou day in night. Who are you? You are like a day." You are like a sun for the night because if you come, even the night can turn into a day. So that's why she is praying that Romeo would come back. Then she says, for thou will lie upon the wings of night because you always stay on the wings of the night. Wings of the night here means somewhere in the midnight when it is dark because you seem to be coming flying on the night you know, on the wings of the night. That means when night falls, you seem to be coming around because I met you when it was night and that's why I feel that you always come along with the night. Come gentle night. Or before that she says, you look whiter than the new snow on a raven's back. You know, she is doing a comparison here. Already Romeo made a comparison that she looked like a snowy dove. Now she is making a comparison to him that she, he looks like a new snow. Snow was probably something that was common in Verona du during that particular season. And hence Shakespeare uses uh, snow as uh, an imagery to, uh, you know, to imply pure love, to imply purity, to imply brightness or to imply uh, fairness. So she says, you look whiter than new snow, which is untainted, which is not dirty, which doesn't have any 
colors of any sort, which, does, which is not trodden upon. And such a pure and fresh snow, upon what? Upon a raven's back. Raven is in the family of crow again, black in color. Imagine a raven is flying and on the raven, the bird raven, if there is a stalk of uh, snow, how does it look? It looks very bright because the background is again black. So then she prays, come gentle night, come loving black browed night. Then she is pampering the night. She is rather pepping up the night. She is rather praising the night. She is rather enticing the night, asking night to come. And she doesn't just call night as night. She says, come gentle night. Come loving night. Come black brown broad night. You know, broad means adored, decorated with darkness. You know, you are black broad night. Come because you give me my Romeo. She knows one thing. If only the night comes, she can have her Romeo. That's why she's praying to the night to give her her Romeo. And when I shall die, by now, Juliet even had the thoughts of death because she knew that her Romeo would not come back. Or, if at all, Romeo would come, there would be a battle, there would be a fight between these two families, the Montagues and the Capulets. She also fears that in that battle, she may get killed. Romeo also may get killed. But she is not afraid of death. But she is afraid of one thing, that she wants to die and also wants her beloved also to be with her in heaven. So hence she makes her love immortal, something that doesn't have death. Because most of the relationships we know that ends with a person's death. Parents or husband, wife, children, once they are dead, they are gone. We still love them, but they cannot love us back. Now, Juliet says, and when I shall die, take him and cut him in little stars. She is praying to the night that after she dies, night should take Romeo and cut him into pieces. Not that Juliet was a butcher's daughter who loved in cutting people into pieces, but it's her intense love for him. It's her passionate love for him, which makes her to feel that Instead of just dying with her, Romeo should rather be converted into, transformed into little stars in the sky, which would really bright, uh, you know, shine brighter in the sky and brighten the entire firmament. That's why she says, it's not that she wants to evoke feelings of cruelty or something like a bad bloodshed and all that here. She just wants to say that, she loves her Romeo and she doesn't want to part with him. And if she dies, she wants Romeo also to be in heaven. Take him and cut him in, out in little stars, not pieces, but stars. And he will make the face of heaven so fine. And what will Romeo do? And if you fix Romeo in different parts of the sky, he will start shining brightly. And that shining Romeo will make the entire firmament the entire sky to shine so fine that all the world will be in love with the night. So that the entire world, the people of the world will be in, you know, they will be in love with the night. They won't care for daytime because there's nothing so exciting in the daytime. Nothing so, so beautiful, you know, so smart and so handsome like that of Romeo who is going to be shining in the night. Nothing so encouraging like that of the beauty of uh, the sky of the night and they think that even the sun who gives them light, energy, heat, you know, even food, crops, everything cannot be a match to the beauty of Romeo in the night. Look at the comparison. Here, Romeo is compared to sun and in a sense brighter than the sun, more powerful than the sun. That's beautiful. Now, that all the world will be in love with the night and pay no worship, means pay no attention to the garnish sun, to the garnish sun. Garnish means here the bright shining sun, to the beautiful sun. So, this was taken from Act 3 and scene number 2, as I told you, after several days, 
or several months of their marriage and uh, you know, so Romeo, uh, Juliet was waiting passionately, uh, you know, patiently and passionately for him. Now we will see the formal summary of this particular poem in passing. So the first stanza of the poem describes the feeling which Romeo has towards Juliet. According to Romeo, the beauty of Juliet is above the normal references about, about him or around him. He says that her beauty surprise, uh, surprise, uh, surpasses the brightness of the light, it appears to him that Juliet teaches the torches to burn brighter as she is the incarnation of light according to him. Let us move on. He compares her beauty to the twilight of the golden sunset and to a costly jewel in an Ethiop's ear or an African's ear. Her beauty was too rare in the world as it would evoke a venerable feeling or respectful feeling in the minds of the beholder. She is just as, uh, she is just like a snowy dove flying among the troops of the crows. She is distinct among her companions. Now, as the dance is over, Romeo wants to move close to Juliet and offer his love for her and try to touch her smooth divine hands. And he also believes that by touching her hands, his rough hands will become smooth and blessed. This is an indication of true love. And he admits that he had never seen such beauty anywhere before in his life. Juliet, on the other hand, also expresses her intense love for him through many metaphors and uh, you know, even similes. She calls him a day in the night and as he, uh, uh, you know, that he looked like fresh snow upon a raven's back, indicating that he was bright as snow. She prays to the black adorned night that after her death, Romeo should be cut into pieces and the night should fix him in the firmament as little stars that they would brighten the night sky. Though or through this, she wanted him to be immortal or they allowed to be immortal and to remain immortal. She also adds that when Romeo shines in the night, the world will forget the, to worship the glorious sun and spend their night happily watching the brightness of Romeo. In this way, Shakespeare brings about the beauty of the love between Romeo and Juliet, especially the immortal love between Romeo and Juliet. I hope you understood this lesson, friend.